Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Visclonis with Reset Brain and Body here for your Mental Health Monday series. Today we are talking about how to overcome and manage negative thoughts. Now, you are not alone if you have ever caught yourself in a negative thought spiral. Most of my clients talk about it like a spiral. Your mind just gets into a sticky thought and then it just spirals down and down and down and down and it's like a tornado. Otherwise, we just feel like this thought just catches our attention and we simply cannot let go of it. It cannot release us from our grip and we just cannot get ourselves to think about anything else. We just feel really stuck and attached to that thought. So I want to explain to you first kind of how we work through these thoughts by garnering awareness. You know, one of the first things to acknowledge is that a lot of times some of these thought patterns can be a symptom of anxiety. And we've talked about this before in previous videos, but recognizing that when you are unable to untether yourself from a series of negative, cynical, self-critical thinking patterns, that might be a symptom of anxiety. And anxiety that continues to dwell on negative types of thoughts can look and feel a lot like depression as well. And you might actually feel like you're depressed and have a lot of symptoms of depression when in reality it's the anxiety, it's the anxious energy that is attaching you to these thoughts that then is kind of corroding your entire mood and your system and bringing you down and feeling debilitated and really cynical, pessimistic and unmotivated, stuck, etc. So I want to give you some tools today, but recognize that if you feel like your negative thinking goes beyond what I'm talking about, it's important to ask for help and to get an evaluation and see if maybe what you're experiencing might actually be anxiety. And then through therapy or medication or a combination of both, perhaps being able to help yourself further more than just um, what you might be getting in this video today. Okay. so. As I mentioned, the first thing that we have to do is develop awareness. And so typically when we are caught up in negative thinking, there's a reason behind that negative thinking. And so I always like to talk to clients about this cycle of stress that's happening. Where are these thoughts coming from? Why are they coming up? Now, most of us operate with a pretty busy and stressful lifestyle. By that nature, we tend to be on autopilot. We tend to move quickly. We tend to let our thoughts override our system and be the driving force throughout our day. And with that, our thoughts then feel true. We tend to rely on our thoughts as the truth above and beyond anything else. Our thoughts then are the drivers of our emotions, our feelings, our reactions, our sensitivities. And we start to just believe in our thoughts. Now, the thing is, is that our thoughts are completely subjective. We have a choice in what we want to think about. We have a choice in deciding what thoughts are true or not. We can choose our thoughts. Now, those of you that have been caught in a spiral or have always been driven by your thoughts feel like that feels impossible, right? To choose your thought. It almost feels like you are a victim of your thoughts. Your thoughts are just always there. It's an incessant noise, right? But there is actually space that can be created where you actually become the observer of your thoughts and that you can then cherry pick the thoughts that you want to engage in. So by first having awareness that your thoughts are not true, your thoughts are simply just thoughts, you start to have that awareness. And then going a little bit further, we ask ourselves, okay, what type of thought is this? If I'm able to catch the thought, if I'm able to notice the thought, what type of thought is it? Now, the types of negative thoughts that we typically have are ones that are should statements. Man, we feel these ones a lot. I always tell my clients, stop shooting on yourself. It makes it a little bit more playful. We can always have a little bit more fun in this type of work, but should based thoughts over generalizations, right? Making broad sweeping statements, all or nothing or black and white thinking, not being able to navigate in the gray, not being able to navigate in the unknown, jumping to conclusions, making assumptions, taking something personally, or 
even personalizing someone else's actions or taking blame or putting blame on someone else. Ignoring the positive, right? So kind of really dwelling on the negative and the cynical. Other things that we do is we ruminate, we worry, the incessant worrying thoughts, the catastrophizing, the worst case scenario thoughts. And then we also reason, oh, I'm feeling this way, and so this is why this is why I must think this way. So being able to catch our thought, have that awareness, and then say, okay, what type of thought is this? Oh gosh, like, oh, I think I'm making an overgeneralization right now. I think I'm making a judgment right now. Oh, this is a should thought. Or, and what I like to work on with a lot of my clients is what kind of shame is this bringing up? What's been triggered for me in this moment? And usually it's a shame story or it's a fear-based thought. It's a scarcity type of mindset, but it's something that feels a little bit icky that if we actually peel back the layers, we're going to uncover a lot more. And when we're on autopilot, when we're driving from our thoughts, we don't like to go there. <laughs> Because a lot of times our thoughts are allowing us to do. And because we're humans, we take pride in what we do and what we're able to accomplish. And so we're used to doing and moving and, and, and having tangible outcomes for our actions. And so our thoughts become useful in that way. And when we actually step back, observe, and wonder, well, why is this happening? Why am I doing this? Do I actually have to fold all of the laundry right now in this moment while on a conference call, while doing the dishes? <laughs> or is this a should statement? Is this a shame story? Is this resentment? Is this anger? Am I making a generalization? And so it, when we start to observe our thoughts, when we start to gain awareness of them, we then dig down a little bit into our belief systems. And so digging into the belief systems takes a little bit more work. That's when we start to uncover what are those experiences, small T traumas, or perhaps big T traumas, what are those messages that we have been living with since we were a child that have been taught to us that we've just ingrained into our psyche, that we've believed, that have then created habits and behaviors that then have allowed our thoughts to continue in this pattern to drive the habits and behaviors. And when we start to first notice our thoughts, it's almost like the thought's a symptom of that belief. And the thought then gives us attention to the behavior that perhaps we realize isn't serving us anymore. Wow, like I'm a negative person. Whew, I have a lot of negative self-critical thoughts a day. Ooh, why? huh, I think I'm a perfectionist. Why? Well, um, I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform, to please others. Why? Well, I never thought I was good enough. Why? Well, because I had an older sibling that seemed to accomplish so much more than me and I always wanted to keep up. Okay, is it true? Is it valid? Is it real? Is this a story I've been telling myself? So this is when we get into then the healing, right? We start to counter the argument. So we have to first ask why. Awareness one, getting curious two. And then how can I reframe, rewrite the story, rewrite the narrative? What is an alternate argument that I have? And then how can I behave from that? How can I act from that? How can I think from that place? And offer ourselves compassion. Ooh, right? Because so often what happens is when people start having this work and doing this work, they start to judge themselves then. Oh my gosh, I'm so negative. What's wrong with me? I'm a horrible person. I'm so judgy. Oh my gosh, I'm such a catastrophizer. I'm a horrible person. I'm a bad mom. I'm a blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, <laughs> you see the spiral then that continues to happen? No, we want to try and avoid that. We want to offer compassion. So we develop the awareness, Right? And eventually we work into that compassion piece. Okay, wow, yeah, like I have a lot of shame here. I have a lot of scarcity. I have belief systems that I think I need to rewind and, and, and reframe for myself so I can start to consciously and intentionally think differently so I can act differently so I can change some of my behaviors. 
So something really tangible just to think of as we're going through this is what I like to call just very simply the catch and release method, okay? So when you're thinking about, about developing this awareness and this, this practice, it's catch and release. Catch and release, right? I'm catching my thought, I'm catching that thought. Ooh, what is it, what is it, why? Can I get curious? I'm gonna let it go and I'm gonna offer myself compassion. And maybe in that moment, you don't get curious enough to be like, oh, this shame story was triggered because of this childhood trauma. No, like every moment does not have to be a moment for exploration. But every moment is an opportunity to catch it. Just say, ooh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna hang on to this thought. I can release it. Maybe later I'll come back to the reflection. But I'm gonna offer myself compassion. Over and over and over again. We don't just catch and release one day or for two minutes a day. We catch and release all day, every day for the rest of our life. And the thing is, is that eventually maybe you've catch and release a couple times a day and that's it. In the beginning though, we're catching and releasing 200 times a day. We have thousands of thoughts a day. So the more you catch them and you get curious and you can reframe and heal and offer yourself compassion, the more you're gonna be able to overcome the negative ones, the overwhelming ones, the cynical ones, all the ones that I listed that drive behavior that you probably aren't enjoying very well, much. Otherwise, you, you wouldn't be listening right now. Okay, so we build awareness, we get curious, we peel back the layers to heal, we offer ourselves compassion. Every day, moment to moment, catching and releasing, catch and release, understand, catch, release, compassion, catch, release, compassion, over and over again. It's not a matter of never having a negative thought or never having a judgmental or self-critical or catastrophizing or scary or ruminating worry thought. It's a matter of how quickly can you catch yourself and return back to compassion for yourself and perhaps the person, the environment that you were judging, that you were feeling negatively towards. That's the practice over and over and over again. And it will get easier, but you have to start somewhere. So remember, you have the ability to choose your thoughts. Your thoughts do not choose you, you can choose your thoughts. And if we have the ability to choose our thoughts, like we know we do, why not choose love? Why not choose hope? Why not choose joy and gratitude if we can? If we can create that space. Choose love. Choose the ones that make you feel better. We can't control so many things, but you can control your thoughts. Oftentimes we think we can control so much, which is why we spend so much time in our head. So choose the thoughts that make you feel better. And one of my favorite quotes in the world, which I will leave you with, is by Wayne Dyer. When we change the way we look at things, the way we look at things change. The things we look at change. When we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Sorry about that. All right, good luck out there. <laughs>